What's up everybody? Um, so here we are at CHOP, which is the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. May 11th, uh, my son had his second surgery. Um, this one was actually uh, on a muscle um, attached to his eye that needed to be cut and stitched and all that good gross stuff. Um, this is also the same uh, hospital that his heart surgery was done and um, so I had no worries coming here a second time um, so we got two out of three done but uh, you know later on that day he uh, was smiling by the end of the night I would think I think it was but he was smiling I uh, got a good night's rest and uh, he's he's healing up quick so just wanted to you know give you guys an update on that that he's doing well a lot of people have been asking and again I'll link the GoFundMe down below I haven't done it in all you know a while but um, here he is looking around like hey what am I doing here as long as I got something to chew on I'm good so you know he's a good baby he's uh, you know he's tough and um, you know, he's always curious on what's going on. But, yeah, he was super calm beforehand. You know, we're just sitting here getting prepped to take him to anesthesia. Um, it was a long day, but, you know, it was a good it was a good day. So that's that update. Now let's, um, let's skip over to the following weekend. So we were at the uh, Frag Swap in Newcastle, Delaware. And I get, didn't get a chance to, to do my normal pictures and, and good video. Um, there was actually a good amount of YouTubers there. Uh, it was a small room, so it's not like we, we got lost. So that we were, we were talking quite a bit throughout the whole show. Um, these guys here, the, the, they had some pretty good prices and some pretty good sized pieces. Um, and I like to inspect everything. Theirs were super clean. Um, here's another one, TSM, another super clean, or super clean tank. Uh, there was a, lot, a good amount of guys from reef clubs here, and and of course you know your your um, your growers and sellers and stuff were there. This tank was pretty colorful, uh, super happy, healthy corals. Uh, this one hammer right there in the middle, the branches on it were gigantic. Um, I didn't get to ask him what the actual scientific name of that one was, but it was super thick. I would say inch and three quarters, you know, inch and seven eighths in diameter just for each stalk. And it wasn't growing like your typical branching euphelia. Um, same thing with that bubble coral. It was massive. And then, uh, you know, you had your other guys that had the nice little uh, single zoas for sale and... Um, you know, recordias and mushrooms. I actually saw a uh, recordia in here that I wanted, and I forgot to go back at the end of the day. And, um, you know, just like I said, it was a lot of chit-chatting going on, but also a lot of walking around. And since it was a super small room, I think there was maybe 12 tables there with coral on it. So it's, you know, I got to look at each tank like freaking 10 times. So this one here had... For USPS guys and acros and stuff, lots of colors in this one here. Um, pretty nice looking stuff. After this show is where I, you know, I made I made a slight decision. You know, I was talking to a specific vendor um, about acros and SPS, and you know, I got you know I used to have some encrusting corals. I have one in my tank now. Um, you know, it's it encrusts around the rock. It's a slow encruster, I guess you could say. So uh, I did pick up myself um, seven frags at this show. Uh, one of them, in you know, I won um, in the raffle. Uh, I, hey, check out that Corian tank there. Looks very familiar. This is uh, the Tank Breakers. These are the guys who bought my tank at the last show. And uh, they sold some fish out of it. So... Looks good, but um, back to yeah the the acro. So, so so you know talking to a certain uh, coral seller, and I was 
maybe a half hour conversation with him about acros and this and that. And, um, you know, he's heard of me before. Uh, it's not like I'm some huge name or anything, but um, he was just like, you know, don't be afraid. I told him I don't have a lot of high light. You know, I do have the Kessel, but so he gave me my first acro um, from his tank. So thank you, sir. There you go. Um, you know, I wasn't I wasn't really interested in buying something super expensive. So when it was offered to just for me to just take it home for free, uh, nobody's gonna ever turn down a free coral. And if I don't think it's gonna be healthy, I know a couple guys out there that do have tanks that are good with acros, so I can easily give it to them. Yo, Kobe, there he is. He caught him eating a hot dog. <laughs> He's at all the shows, dude. He's super cool, that guy. But, yeah, that was a good show. So, I do my normal thing when I get home. And that's it. Yep, it's that time again. Uh, just got back from a frag swap. And, you know, everybody has their own method when they get home. My method stays the same. Um, so, usually what I do is the night before, I, I mix about three gallons of water. Usually, I only need a gallon and a half but you know have the little extra water on hand in case you need it um, in case you spill something or whatever you have a mishaps even if you only get one little frag you know it's easier to dump out water than to sit there and wait for water to mix um, another tip that I have for frag swaps is make sure you have a good cooler um, this one here fit all my frags in it today case I go to a, another show I got the monster cooler but um, you know always have your own cooler on standby bring some towels and stuff to put inside to make sure that the coral doesn't you know move around and my number one trick and tip is to bring your own containers so um, you know I don't want to get coral in a bag that could pop right because some guys are cheap they'll just throw this this I bag myself I saw this guy in a frag tank. I said, yo, let me get that. It's just a little starfish that was probably going to get flushed afterwards. So I figure, you know what, give him to me. He's like, okay. So anyway, got a nice little star there. But um, <clears throat> go to the dollar store, get yourself some Tupperware. Uh, go to Walmart, wherever, get some good Tupperware. Get some, you know, it's better that way. This way you can just say, hey, I got my own container. Plus this way, you know, like this. This is the only container I let a guy give me. Um, it's your basic frag swap container, right? A little solo cup. This thing could, you know, it's it could crack, it could break, it could leak. The lid could pop off while you're walking around. And uh, you're beat, you know, your coral shot. So, um, you know, this little container here, as opposed to, uh, you know, the medium and the big container, which you could put the same coral in, but have three times the amount of water, which is better for you and your coral if you're going to be at the swap all day, right? So you get this. It's a nice, you know, it's a harder U-line um, little sneak peek of what I got there. But this is definitely a better container. Same with your basic specimen jars, you know. These things, they don't crush as easy. They're a lot more uh, watertight. This I actually uh, won in the raffle, it's a little blasto. I was like, yeah, it was a $25 um, freebie. And I was like, yeah, I don't have one, give it to me. But this is why you dip your coral, people. Look at the bubble algae on there. I'm not having that shit in my tank. So my basic dips um, <clears throat> go as usual. You know, bare complete. I use um, 100 milliliters of bare insect can uh, bear you know advanced insect killer I use a hundred milliliters um, per I would say five-eighths of a gallon I usually do a little over half a gallon in, in this container um, and then I sit them and mix them in there for about 10 minutes and then from there I go to this container which is um, the revive coral cleaner and then from this container I go to um, I'll have two other containers of fresh salt water. And then once I'm done with them, then I put them in this bucket to give them another rinse. And, uh, you know, I also scrape them with a toothbrush and a scraper. I pick at them pretty good. And if there's a frag plug with hair algae on it, I just cut that plug right off. I don't care. I'm not, 
I'm not, you know, I don't care how much the coral costs, whether it's five dollars or five thousand. I'm not putting something in my tank that's going to destroy everything else. So I'd rather lose one coral than the whole damn tank because I don't have, you know, certain fish that eat certain types of pests. So this little method right here um, is pretty effective. You know, the bear insect killer kills a lot of stuff. So, you know, it was a good day at the swamp. Um, I won a coral. Um, there's a there's actually a coral that I got from a vendor, um, which you guys will be seeing later on. I'm going to have some videos of a couple tanks. I didn't get a whole lot of video because there was a, a good amount of YouTubers there that I was chatting with the whole time. So, sorry for the mess. I got a couple projects going on. Um, you know, I got this little tank here I'm building for somebody. I got, uh, this is the frag tank for um, Austin. Um, and I got a couple of other things. I just piped in a uh, reactor and made a reactor for a guy um, that has a higher volume of flow that you can put through it. So it's, it's, a, it's actually a reactor and a size manifold that you can't get, um, you know, from an aquarium store. It's actually a filtration unit for plumbing, and uh, it's actually better in my book. And um, instead of you know, 50 bucks or 40 bucks or whatever for a reactor, it's like seven dollars for a housing. So and PVC is pretty damn cheap. So um, I'm gonna get to dip in these guys and throw them in the tank, um, and then I'll show you videos of the swap, and then you know. In a day or two when the coral's chilling out, then uh, we'll get a tank update.